What's up, guys? It's been a while. Uh, can't tell you last time I post, but uh, I'm back. I want to start getting the habit of it. College has been a lot. Working on a podcast. We'll talk to that end of the episode or end of this little YouTube video. But tonight, if you're a Kentucky sports fan, it is a massive announcement, and that's why we are here. Olivier Saar, Jacob Toppin, both eligible for Kentucky. This is massive news. Massive news. If you're looking at Olivier Saar, it's the best transfer in the whole entire country. Kentucky landed him, and then it's just, can we get his eligibility? When are we going to get the eligibility from him? He's a great player. When is the NCAA going to grant us the el eligibility? Danny Manning, he left for, uh, he got, he left Wake Forest. So now Olivier Sar transferred. You know, he didn't get to have the coach that he wanted to play for. He should have been eligible a very long time ago, but we all know how the NCAA is, right? Very, very interesting. Jacob Toppin, on the other hand, if you don't know, he is the brother of Obi Toppin from Dayton, who's going to be a top five pick in this year's NBA draft. So Kentucky sees a lot of upside with him. He comes from Rhode Island, played a little bit of minutes there. They see a lot of upside with him. And coming into this year, I thought they were going to redshirt him. But they must see something I don't. I mean, he must have a lot of upside. And could he could he benefit the team? I think so. It, now with Olivier and Jacob both getting eligible, you have a legit potential. You look in the mirror and you say, we are 10 deep. And we'll go down it. We'll go down it. Davion Mintz, Devin Askew, BJ Boston, Terrence Clark, Isaiah Jackson, Lance Ware, you know, Olivier Saar, Jacob Toppin, Cameron Fletcher, Keon Brooks, you can't forget. You look at that, you got a very talented team. You need a Saar to win a national championship. Kentucky's got that with Terrence Clark. I think Terrence Clark could be one of the greatest players in Cal Perry's era. That's a lot to ask for, though, but he, he he's insanely talented. We also looked, you have another star, B.J. Boston. Now, B.J. Boston, he started this recruit train. He brought all these guys in. B.J. Boston's talented. That's another star. And I, I truly do think giving uh, getting Olivier Star eligible, you now have a third star. You need three to possibly win a championship. Maybe a little less, but you always have your guys you can rely on. You have your three across the board now. Your two guards and an unbelievable big man who could be one of the best in the country this year. That's big. That's really big. Now you look, you see what type of depth are we looking at? Okay, well now you have guys who can also be stars. You look at Keon Brooks. He was coming into himself last year. He was getting better and he was progressing better and better and better. Well, now you look and you say, Keon's about to take that sophomore leap, which you hope he does. Keon could be a leader of this team. Keon Brooks can be special. Now you're talking four very, very, very good players. Now you have veteran leadership. You bring in the Creighton transfer, Davion Mintz. He's good. Veteran leadership, along with Olivier Saar, who's a senior. You got everything. You have the pieces to be put together to be a championship team. And we say this, we say this every year about Kentucky. Oh, it's our year, it's our year. Uh, trust me, I'm the one who does it all the time, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do as well. Now, there's a lot of good teams this year. Villanova, Baylor, those are the top teams. They are going to be great. I think Kentucky's right along there with them. You have the guard play. You have the big play. I mean, from what I'm hearing, Isaiah Jackson, he is turning heads. He's a special player right now in practice, and... He's going to get a lot of playing time, and he's going to be big. He is. He's playing well. Lance Ware, he's got potential. You got your bigs. Now, what do we go back to? We go back to last year's team. You look, could that have team won a national team? Maybe. Maybe. They had the second longest winning streak going into March Madness before uh, COVID got, or Corona came around. But what did that team lack? It lacked bigs. Nick Richards was unbelievable. He took a huge, huge step up and was he was great. But you never had that consistency with EJ Montgomery. He wasn't all there. He he wasn't he wasn't great. You know? And then you had Nate Cena. Well now you're relying on a guy from Bucknell. And don't get me wrong, Nate played great. I appreciate everything Nate did for the program. 
Yeah, but it just wasn't... He was a good role player. Let's put it that way. He struggled, though, athleticism-wise. You have Isaiah Jackson this year, very athletic. Lance Ware can do that, and Olivier Sars is a special talent. You could also put in the four at Keon Brooks, but he can also be a small forward as well, slash power forward. So you have great guard depth to play. Davion Mintz, a young guard, and Devin Askew. And then you got, I mean, it doesn't even need to be explained. Terrence Clark and B.J. Boston, who could potentially be the best backcourt in the whole entire country this year. Yeah, you can't forget Cameron Fletcher. He's good. He's good. He's very underrated, but he's a very, very, very good defensively. He's very good defensively. He gets kind of lost in this class and this team, but he's going to be good. He will. Kentucky's got a chance. So that's just an exciting thing. Uh, as the season gets closer, I mean, they did announce we are playing Texas in January this year at Rupp Arena. That should be a good game. So, you know, as the season gets closer, there will be more basketball talk from me. And there will be basketball vlogs. But let's also give a shout out right now to the football team. Two game win streak, beat Mississippi State, beat Tennessee. That's a big win. That's a big, big, big win. You know, to get get the win against Tennessee, that's what you want. That is where, I mean, we made Garitano look horrible. DBU all of a sudden just came on down to Lexington, Kentucky, and the boys are buzzing. So, Missouri vlog. I'm going to do the Missouri vlog. I'll tell you right now, I did the Auburn vlog. We lost. I did the old Miss vlog. We lost. So then I was like, all right, Mississippi State, we'll take the week off. Well, we won. Shame on me, not doing that one. And then Tennessee, oh, we won. I was too hyped up in that game. But we're back now, okay? We got some good content coming on the way. And if you want more content from me, go, I, I please encourage all of you, go follow on anything, you Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spot, like any, anything, the Mac on Sports Podcast. If you want the most content from me and a lot of Kentucky talk, and just sports overall. Mac on Sports Podcast episodes every Monday and every Thursday. I really hope you guys do that. We're back. This is good. Basketball, just we're in football season, but let me tell you, I just got that basketball feeling all of a sudden today. Kentucky's 10 deep. Kentucky's scary good. It's good to see you guys. Go subscribe to the podcast. Go listen. Give me a review. Love you guys. Peace out.